Is it possible to tell what your body is burning for fuel and then use that information to help lose weight, to biohack your metabolism, if you will? Absolutely. And it's all now available on this very small, simple to use device called the Lumen. I'm gonna show you some of the science behind it and it's all coming right up. The process by which the body takes a substance and then burns it for energy is called respiration. Most of the time we use aerobic respiration, which takes in oxygen. There's also anaerobic respiration and that's mostly used in like sprinting and very high energy demands. But the majority of the time we're using oxygen to burn. Now the body has two types of fuel that can, it can use for energy. The first is glucose, and those are like carbohydrates, and they metabolize that through the TCA cycle and then oxidative phosphorylation, sometimes called oxphos, and that produces the currency of cellular energy, which is ATP. As a waste product, it produces carbon dioxide, and you exhale that through your lungs. The other major fuel that the body can use is fat, whether it's dietary fat or body fat. And it processes that through a different uh, mechanism and it has a slightly different pathway and therefore different amounts of waste product. Protein is generally not used as a fuel because protein like muscle and uh, bones and tissues are structural and functional tissue and you don't really want to burn that for energy. So glucose, carbs, or fat, that is body fat or dietary fat, are your main sources of fuel. And which one you use turns out to be very important to whether or not you can lose weight, that is losing body fat. Because the only way that you can lose body fat is to burn it off. If you are continually burning carbs, well, you can't burn body fat. It's a different fuel source entirely. You can use something called the respiratory quotient. And I'm gonna to get to some of the science behind that, how it works, but it's basically a measurement of what your body is using. If it's closer to 1.0, that means you're burning mostly carbon dioxide. If it's closer to 0.7, then your body is mostly burning fat. And lots of studies through the years have shown that this respiratory quotient is actually a very important predictor of weight changes, such as this study, fasting respiratory quotient as a predictor of weight changes in non-obese women. And in this study and many other studies, they've took a group of women, they followed them over three years. And over those years, they looked at what they were using for energy by measuring their respiratory quotient. They correlated that to the weight changes over that period of time. And you can see that over those years, some women gained a lot of weight. Oh, some of them 20 pounds and some of them lost a lot of weight and some of them had lost 20 pounds. And what you can see from this graph is that there's quite a strong correlation between this respiratory quotient and subsequent weight gain. Those people who were burning mostly fat, that is their RQs tend to be on the lower side, closer to 0.7, also tended to lose weight. And those women who tended to burn mostly carbohydrates, that is their RQs were closer to 1.0, tended to gain the most weight. So that's really important because we want to stay weight neutral or lose weight. So how are you going to measure the respiratory quotient? In the past, you'd have to use very complicated devices like this, and you'd have somebody on a treadmill or uh, running or on an exercise bicycle, you'd have them breathing in and out, and that's how you would measure it. But no longer. There's actually a very simple device that can measure a very close approximation of the respiratory quotient, and that's this Lumen device. It's a very simple idea. That is, you take a carbon dioxide meter and a flow meter. So by calibrating it, it can then measure how much oxygen you're taking in and compare that to how much carbon dioxide you're producing. 
and it produces what's technically called a RER or the respiratory exchange ratio, which then closely approximates the respiratory quotient. So all you have to do is take this device and breathe in and out. Just like that. And when it's combined with your app, it's going to tell you how much oxygen you're using and how much carbon dioxide you're using. And by simply comparing that ratio, it's going to tell you the RER, which is then going to tell you what the respiratory quotient is. And in this study, you can see that the RER very closely is uh, approximated to what the Lumen device measures, which then has been shown to be very closely uh, related to the respiratory quotient. So instead of having to use a very complex device to measure this thing, you can now do it every single day whenever you feel like it if you want to know whether your body is burning fat or burning carbs. And that's really important information because it's a process called biofeedback. If you don't know if you're doing things right or wrong, you're never going to improve. Think about this. Think about if you are to practice basketball, you're shooting free throws, and after each shot, you're going to get immediate feedback if you're going you know, too far, too short, too high, too low. You'll know if it goes in or not. But with your diet, you don't have that feedback mechanism. How do you know you're eating the, the foods that are right for your metabolism? We want to be burning fat, but the foods we eat, we don't know if we're burning fat or not. Well, that's where a device such as a Lumen can come in handy because you can simply measure it without complicated equipment. And it's going to tell you on your app whether you're burning fat or burning carbs on a very simple, easy to read scale. If you're taking too many carbs and you want to get your respiratory quotient closer to the fat burning range, well, you can adjust your diet. You can then lower your carbohydrate intake, for example, or you can do some intermittent fasting, both of which are great ways to change up your respiratory quotient. When you fast, what you're going to do is you're going to force your body to start using some of the body fat. So what is this respiratory quotient? It's essentially the ratio of carbon dioxide production to oxygen consumption. When carbohydrate is metabolized, exactly one molecule of carbon dioxide is produced for every molecule of oxygen. So your RQ, which is a simple ratio, is 1.0. When fat is metabolized, it's a different ratio. You're going to produce 70 molecules of carbon dioxide for every 100 molecules of oxygen you consume. So therefore, your respiratory quotient is going to be 0.7. So the point of using a Lumen device is to understand what it is that your body is doing. What fuel is it using? And is it the right fuel? in order for you to lose weight. And that's what the process of biohacking is, to take this information and use it going forward. Other studies, such as this one, the respiratory quotient as a prognostic factor in weight loss rebound, also looks at the same data. That is to say, losing weight is not always the hardest thing. Keeping it off is also very hard. When you look at a group of people and you look at what their respiratory quotient is compared to whether they regain that weight after weight loss, you can see the same strong correlation. At three months and at 12 months shows that those people who tend to keep that body weight off or in fact even lose more body weight they have respiratory quotients closer to 0.7 or fat burning. And those who tend to regain that weight tend to have respiratory quotients much higher, so closer to 0.1. And that is going to make you uh, tend to regain that weight. Again, it makes a lot of sense because if your body is burning glucose, well, sorry, that body fat is not getting used up. 
We've used it in a lot of our uh, clients uh, for at thefastingmethod.com and a lot of people have really found it to be a game changer in how they look at things. So check it out if you want to. They were very kind to sponsor this video. You can use the promo code below to get a discount if you like, but I think it's actually a huge advance. This non-invasive monitoring of your metabolism is gonna give you the information you need to really make a difference.